What's up, guys? How are you? Welcome to a Friday morning edition of the Daily Juice Podcast. My name is Matt Perrault. You can follow me on Twitter at Sports Talk. Matt, we are here every single morning. Bettingpros.com, always being brought to you by BetMGM. And we have added a new feature to the Daily Juice. If I sound a little different this morning, so we're taping me do this today. We've never done this before where we've had me actually on camera. This is a new thing we're doing on the YouTube channel for Betting Pros. So go check it out, YouTube. It's where we do the live streams. So if you guys have seen the live stream, you're going to recognize the background, recognize the videos. It's very similar to what we've done every Sunday morning, except now we're doing it here for the Daily Juice. So this is unique. This is different. I'm not normally on camera doing this, you know, at 9 o'clock Pacific time every night like we do it, but this is unique. And so let's see how it goes. If you guys like it, we'll keep doing it. If you don't, well, we'll stop. But my guess is it's going to open up to some more people who maybe only watch on YouTube or looking for picks every day. So every morning, the plan is to drop this uh, alongside with the podcast. So you like audio, nothing's changing. Get it where you get your podcasts every single morning. If you want to watch it, you can watch it. And maybe we'll do some unique kind of crazy cool things with the video. And maybe we'll have graphics and stats and things as we go. Who knows? I'm not a video guy. This might come out horribly. I don't know. But we're going to start it this morning today here on a Friday before the Super Bowl for the Daily Juice live stream for video. I guess not live stream. The Daily Juice podcast for video here with us on a Friday. So it's Friday. It's the Friday before the Super Bowl. Here's what I'm doing today, okay? I'm giving you four plays on the Super Bowl. I'm giving you one college basketball play. I'm giving you one NBA play. And it's Friday. That means it's time for the... Don't play a parlay. Parlay, which is now two and four officially. I don't bet it. It doesn't count. You guys like doing parlays. So I throw one out that's always three legs or more, at least six to one, sorry, at least five to one return on investment if you want to play it. So it's only for a little fun. It's a little sprinkle, a little added to a Friday. You want to hop in and be a part of it. Nice, fun, and easy things to get a hold of and to be a part of it. So looking forward to the live stream coming up on Sunday for the Daily Juice. Looking forward to what's going to happen for everybody who is involved uh, with the Daily Juice live stream and the Betting Pros live stream. Dan Harris and I are going to be rocking it here on this very YouTube channel. We're going to be getting you guys excited for the Super Bowl at 4.30 Eastern time from 4.30 until uh, 5.30 for one hour. We're making picks plays and all sorts of fun things happening. We're so excited to get after this and so excited to bring you guys all the prizes that we're giving away. I've got some really cool things to give away. Looking forward to all you guys potentially winning something very special like a autographed helmet. The Giannis Antetokounmpo jersey is rocking right now. You guys love this. I hit the Utah Jazz NBA play last night. So Dan Harris said, Matt, play, a, play, play more NBA games. All right. We bet Utah minus seven. They win easily. Hockey wasn't good last night, so I'm taking hockey off. We played. We got both legs of the parlay wrong yesterday. Ottawa somehow won a hockey game, so maybe they heard me talking trash about them. But Montreal, heavy favorites. They lose that game at home, and then Columbus wins the game by one over Dallas. So bad night in hockey. Let's take a little break from hockey. One NBA play today, one college basketball play today, and then the Super Bowl bets and the Super Bowl fun. So before we get to all the picks, let me tell you about our, our Bet MGM offer, which is going on for the Super Bowl. It's really cool. This is for everybody outside of Pennsylvania. It's good until Sunday. It's a risk-free first bet at up to $600 and a $50 parlay insurance when you get a new account using the promo code JUICE100. That's a very important thing. Promo code JUICE100. It's a big offer for the big game. Players can get a risk-free bet up to $600. And in addition, all users will receive $50 of parlay insurance, which you could use today if you'd like, on the Don't Better Parlay Parlay. Great time to do it. Available in New Jersey, Colorado, Indiana, Tennessee, Iowa, Michigan, uh, Virginia, and West Virginia. I don't know why Indiana's in there twice, but uh, New Jersey, Colorado, Iowa, Indiana, Tennessee, Michigan, Virginia, West Virginia. That's gotten very long since we started the Daily Juice. But if you're in PA, the offer for you is this. It's still Juice 100. That promo code is very important to use, but it's a risk-free bet of up to $600 just in Pennsylvania. It's no parlay insurance for you guys in Pennsylvania, but it's a risk-free bet of up to $600 for the Super Bowl. New users, promo code Juice 100. Very important. You guys go use that. You must be 21 years or older to take advantage of this. Go to bettingpros.com for terms and conditions. You must be physically located in the states of New Jersey, Colorado, Indiana, Tennessee, Iowa, Michigan, Virginia, West Virginia, or Pennsylvania. 
Please gamble responsibly. Got a gambling problem? Call 1-800-522-4700 in Colorado or Nevada, 1-800-GAMBLER in New Jersey and West Virginia, or 1-800-9 with it in Indiana. All right, so here's where we are going into the Super Bowl. Lots of picks, lots of plays. Right at the top, telling you right now, I am, I am betting a quarter unit on almost every bet on the Super Bowl. All right? I, I just, this is going to be, I'm going to have like, Eight, nine, ten bets going. So I'm giving you four today. Four of my favorites, if you will. I guess two, I'm, I'm going to bet the side and the total today, and then two of my favorite prop bets. So it's going to be a, uh, I'll be committed pretty mo- pretty heavily monetarily, but I'm not going to come in heavy because I don't feel great about the side or the total. I'm betting a quarter unit on either side. I very well could be dead wrong about this, and I'm just doing it for, I'll tell you why here in a second while I'm doing it, but and then two of the prop bets. I always bet a quarter unit on props. My favorite one, I am going to bet a half a unit on it because I've gotten some people who really tell me, look, it's a little heavy on the juice, so go ahead and pay a little more because it's really likely to hit. So we're going to go up to a quarter, to a half a unit on one of these. All right, so let's start with the side. The Buccaneers catching three, three and a half. Here's the thing. Wait. Bet MGM's been at three and a half forever, okay? But you're going to get three and a half most likely at your book. I got three and a half, all right? Everyone I'm talking to, every bookmaker I'm talking to, from Johnny Avello at DraftKings to John Sheeran of FanDuel to the the folks at PointsBets, I mean, I'm just, everyone I'm saying, they are comfortable at three. Everyone, regardless of their liability on Tampa, three. They think the game's going to fall three. So I'm going to listen to them, and I'm going to say KC wins by three. And I'm going to take the hook. And I'm going to take Tampa plus three and a half. I know it's a it's turning to be more public. We've got the Mattress Mac $3.4 million bet that's a hedge on his business. So it's not really a bet. We've got the $2.3 million, though, at BetMGM. And they didn't go to three. Even with a $2.3 million bet, they didn't go to three. They're staying at three and a half. The thought is Casey wins. Maybe Brady backdoors it. Maybe the same thing plays out like we thought before. But I think Tampa can keep the game close enough. Last second field goal. Mahomes makes a play. Maybe it's a 10-point game and Brady goes down and scores a touchdown. They lose by three. Something along those lines. Okay, the bookmakers, they smell something to me. And I think it's a little fishy that they are refusing to come off a three, even with 80, 85% of the money coming on Kansas City. Everyone's picking Kansas City. Everyone's betting Kansas City. I get it. I'm running against the masses, but here's my thing. I am 0-3 betting against Brady in the playoffs this year. I'm not going 0-4, all right, betting against Brady. Just not doing it. I'll go 0-4 on games involving Tom Brady, but I'll go down with my guy. I'll go down with Brady. I'll lose a quarter unit, okay? I'm comfortable with that. It's not a big deal, okay? I lose a quarter unit, so be it. I'm not going against him. I'm going to give him the hook, plus three and a half, it's going to hit. Your book's going to go to three and a half, okay? All indications. DraftKings going to go to three and a half. FanDuel says they're not going to, but I think they might. I think three and a half on kick. If you don't have three right now, you can wait. You're going to get three and a halfs across the country. It's going to pop. There's just too much liability. The public's going to come in on the Chiefs. You're going to see it. I'm taking the Buccaneers plus three and a half in the Super Bowl. And on the, on the total, I'm doing the same thing with the logic. 56 and a half. I got this yesterday at 56 and a half. It's 56 pretty much everywhere. You're going to be able to get back up to 56 and a half. DraftKings, Johnny and Bello told me today, they will be at 56 and a half at kickoff. Everyone is coming in here, and they're all betting the under now. It's kind of weird, right? We saw a ton of public coming in on the over early. It drove it down 57 to 56. But he said, look, by the time kickoffs, he he thought maybe I'm going to have to go back up because – I'm going to need some under money, so I'm going to raise it back up, trying to keep people to bet in the under because everyone's betting over. And so I need some over money, so we're we're going to rise – or some under money. So I'm going to rise it up and see if I can get some people to take the under. Professionals are on the under, and the number opening up at 57.5, being bet down to 56. I got it at 56.5. Maybe you get it better. Maybe you get under 57, but I just think this is going to be a slower starting game. I think this game is going to be a bit more – 
on the running side, and I don't care about the weather. I'm not betting this because of the weather. I'm betting this for Brady and slow starts. I'm betting this on the Super Bowl, and this is not a regular season game. I'm betting on the Buccaneers' defense to play really well, and I'm banking on field goals, okay? Not touchdowns in the first quarter or the first half. I'm banking on field goals. So not touchdowns, field goals. So quarter unit, Bucks plus three and a half. Quarter unit, under 56 and a half for the Super Bowl. Two prop bets that I like. The first, this is in the first quarter. If you look at Tom Brady's previous nine Super Bowls, did you know Tom Brady has never scored a touchdown in the first quarter in nine Super Bowls? Did you know that Tom Brady has scored a grand total of three points? Three points in these games. That That's ridiculous. I mean, it's absolutely insanity when you stop and think about this. Like Brady does not score in the first half of these Super Bowls. It is remarkable. And it's been nine games. So let's just say KC does score a touchdown early. How many possessions do you think they're going to have? I'm going to bank on two. I'm going to bank on one ending in a punt, which might be difficult, but I'm going to bank on at least one of those two possessions to end on a punt. Then on the other side, I'm going to bank on Tom Brady in this offense, starting like it did with the Patriots, which is slow. I think a 7-3 first half score is very, very likely. It could be 6-3. to three. It could be 3 nothing. It could be something really shocking, right? Everyone's going to bet the over. And I'm not saying the over's dead after that because we've seen second halves. But in Brady's history, I think we're going to go 10 for 10 here with Brady not scoring a touchdown. And I know this is minus 150 here, but I got under 10.5 points in the first quarter at minus 150. We're going a quarter unit minus, sorry, under 10.5 points in the first quarter. I'm not buying that this is going to be like the first matchup and it's 17 nothing and an offensive explosion. The Chiefs score at will. Not buying it, okay? This is the Super Bowl. This is Todd Bowles' defense. They're playing much, much better in the postseason. I don't think they're going to get annihilated. They might get annihilated later, not early. First quarter, under 10.5. And, and then my favorite prop of the entire Super Bowl, all right? Under one and a half yards for the shortest touchdown. How many times do you see pass interference calls in the end zone? How many times do you see a wide out or a running back get pushed out at the one yard line? How many times do you see just QB sneaks right into the end zone? Maybe you go with Brady, touchdown, rushing touchdown, or Patrick Mahomes, rushing touchdown. Regardless, those are great bets to make, and we'll talk about those later. But under one and a half yards for the shortest touchdown in the Super Bowl is minus 177 at DraftKings. Okay, that's a, uh, in, in, I've seen it in Vegas at minus 180. Okay, I got it at minus 180. I'm putting a half a unit on it. Okay, it's juiced up. Okay, that's a, that's a juiced up prop. Okay, I understand maybe you don't want to lay the 180, but I feel comfortable with that. I'm going under one and a half yards for the shortest touchdown for a half a unit. All right, so for the Super Bowl, four plays here on a Friday. I'll give you more tomorrow and more on Sunday. I've got a ton of things to, to, to talk about and bet on, but we're going Bucks plus three and a half, under 56 and a half for the Super Bowl, under 10 and a half points in the first quarter, and under one and a half yards as the shortest touchdown for either team in the Super Bowl. Okay, so that's Sunday. Let's talk about tonight, and let's talk about Boise State in Nevada in college basketball. This is going to be an interesting game. Line opened up at four and a half. The first move has been towards, well, Nevada, plus four and a half at home. Nevada is coming off of back-to-back -back wins over their arch rival. Nevada has played pretty well this season against the number. And one thing at home, they've played pretty well at home as well. Nevada is 13-5 and five to the number this year. It's very good. Boise State is 10-5 and five to the number. Equally very good. The thing about this game that I think separates the two is I think Boise is a bit more athletic. This is going to be a really good game, and four, four points might be too heavy. Opened up at four and a half, it's down to four. Four points might be too heavy, but I'm going to take Boise State on the road in the first game of these, of these Mountain West two-game sets. They've played very well in these, okay? They've won, I think they've won every single one of them in the first game of these sets. The second game coming back, they haven't played very well and they haven't covered and certainly they didn't cover against Air Force in the second game. 
The first game against Colorado State, actually, they lost that first game against CSU. So that was the one difference. They lost that game by 22 points. They got killed. So this is a road favorite. I know it's a little bit dicey, but I watched the game against against UNLV for Nevada. I watched both games, and I'm not really all that impressed. UNLV is not a good basketball team, okay? They're just, they're just not good. But I'm not sure so good how good Nevada is. They're kind of a middle-of-the-pack team. They've been very good against the number. But Boise State equally has been very good against the number. This is February now. This is go time. I'm going to lay the four with the Boise State Broncos because I think they have a better defense against Nevada, and I think they can score more than what Nevada can stop them when it comes to scoring. So I think I, mean, I think we could see an up-tempo game there. I thought about taking the over in this game, but just because Boise defensively, Boise has been put up some pretty nice numbers, I'm a little bit concerned about going with the with the under or sorry with the over in this game because Boise is you know they are the second best effective field goal percentage defense in the in the Mountain West Conference 47.4 percent it's a big stat for me I talk about it a lot in the podcast it's a big stat defensively I think they're going to be able to hold down Nevada I think they score more I'm going to lay the four points Boise State minus four one play in the NBA and we're going to go to the late game we're going to talk about Boston here Boston on the road at the LA Clippers. Another road game for Boston. And I think some tired legs might factor in here. The line is six for this one, all right? Boston is a team that without Marcus Smart, I think they're going to have some tough times defensively. He's coming back, okay? He's coming back, which is big. But until he does, Boston is 10-10 and to the over. The Clippers are 14-9 and to the over. I found some interesting stats. Boston on the road... In their last 10 games, on the road as a dog, the over is 7-2-1 and one in those games, including the last two games on the road as dogs, including their last game where they were one-point underdogs to Sacramento. They lost the game by five, but the game went over. 220, excuse me, 224, 221, somewhere in that range, you know, the last two games. Over has hit three straight games for Boston on the road as road dogs. They're catching six points tonight. Brad Stevens, I thought he'd be better than this. On the road as an underdog in the last 10 games, Brad Stevens is 6-4 and four against the spread. It's okay, right? This is the Clippers, and so I'm a little concerned. But I think offense is going to get scored here. I think this game goes up-tempo. So I like the over 221 in this game. It's the same, the same number that they had uh, on the road at Philadelphia where they gave up 122 points to Philly. They scored 110. They gave up 116 points last game out to Sacramento, and they scored 111. I think offense, offense, offense. Without Marcus Smart, I think Boston knows they got to score. I think the Clippers, even though defensively they're good, Boston's got weapons. We're going over 221 and a half here for Boston and the Clippers here for a half a unit. So Boise State minus four, half a unit over Boston and the Clippers at 221 for a half a unit. Finally, before we wrap here, it is the don't bet a parlay parlay day. I'm going with an overplay. Three bets. Three overs, all four, uh, well, all three together equals a six to one return on investment. So three legs, six to one. We're going back to the well here, okay? I can't bet the Nets over just because it's ridiculous, okay? It's just absolutely disgusting to keep on betting these Nets overs. But 14 to 15 games have hit. Let's just go back to the well here. Let's just go back to the well. And it's 242 and a half. We're going over 242 and a half for Nets and the Raptors. The Wizards do not play any defense whatsoever in any of their games like we know, and they score a whole lot. I know Miami plays defense. I get it, but they can go up tempo when they need to. We're going over 228.5 for the Wizards in the Heat, and we're going to talk about Akron and their game against Kent State in the MAC. These games always go over. 6-6 to the over for Akron, 8-5 to the over for Kent State. The last game against Toledo for Akron went way over by 17 points. At 150 total, flew over. Uh, Two of the last three games for Kent State have gone over. They didn't cover the over in the last game. It was 148. It went under by three points. But previously, 158 went over. 155 went over. It's 151. We're going over for Akron and Kent State. All right? So three plays, six to one return on investment. The don't play a parlay parlay for Friday. Every Friday we do it. Nets over 240, two and a half. Wizards over 228 and a half. And Akron and Kent State over 151 for our parlay. All right, those are the plays. Check out the video. 
Follow me on Twitter, at Sports Talk Matt. Just again, once again, to recap the plays for the Super Bowl, Bucks plus 3.5, under 56.5, under 10.5 points in the first quarter, under 1.5 yards for the shortest touchdown of the Super Bowl, Boise minus 4, Boston, L.A. over, and the parlay is Nets over 242.5, Wizards over 228.5, and Akron over 151. My name is Matt Peralt. Every morning, it's the Daily Juice Podcast, brought to you by BetMGM, right here on BettingPros.com.